Welcome, everybody. Welcome. We are in Ballroom C, and we are all about AI and virtual human beings today. And I just want to clarify that I am real. I have not been prompted prior to this. Well, no, they did give me some stuff to read to you. That's true. But um, everything that I'm saying is original um, thought and uh, no engines involved. But we are going to learn so much about what's happening in this space today throughout the day. So if you're hanging out with me throughout the day, it's going to be an amazing build to really learning how um, AI and virtual beings are really playing a big role in this XR world. And you're going to hear from a lot of different partners, content creators, and folks that are really setting the stage for this world that is literally opening up to us. How many of you got up this morning and literally within a half hour heard AI? Someone said AI too, right? Okay. It's like Metaverse was last year. I used to take a shot every time somebody said Metaverse to me last year, and I was wasted all the time. <laughs> this year, it's all about AI. So let me just do a little bookkeeping, uh, housekeeping. Sorry, you don't want me to do bookkeeping. I suck at that. Um, all right, so has everyone downloaded awe.live? Okay, that's uh, a great, great way to keep track of where you're going, what you're doing. Um, there is uh, the Expo Hall. Has anyone been to the Expo Hall yet? All right, rock on. So that's going to be open until 5.30 as well as tomorrow. Also, you want to make sure to visit the Snack Lounge. That is open all day as well. Um, and also, um, from 2 to 5 is the Startup Pitch Competition. That's in the Grand Ballroom A. And also, the Niantic Lounge is open all day. And then there's a happy hour from 3 to 5. And that's actually, they're having great talks there as well. And there's some fun giveaways. So if you use your badge, they have some giveaways there. Remember when giveaways were like always? And then COVID and now there's not giveaways? Well, now the giveaways are coming back, ladies and gentlemen. All right, rock on, I love giveaways. Okay, the Augie Ward and XR Prize Ceremony is tonight at 7 to 8.15 in the Mission City Ballroom. And then there is the official AWE party, 8 to 11, um, at the Hilton Santa Clara. Okay. Um, there's food available throughout. And also we'd love to um, hear from you. Um, put your thoughts on social media, tag AWE. Let us know what you think of sessions. We'd love to hear about what you're doing as well. And we also want to make sure that we thank our sponsors. So bear with me as I thank these folks because they're the ones that really make these great events happen. Uh, so our gold sponsors are Ant Reality, Arbor XR, Hollow Light, Lenovo, Sightful, and Zapper. Let's hear for those guys, the gold sponsors. And um, a lot of these folks are also um, in the Expo Hall, so definitely check them out. The Expo Hall is really exciting this year. There are a lot of great demos. You can really um, play with everything. We want to give a special extra big thank you to our Titanium sponsors, Magic Leap, Niantic, Qualcomm, Snap AR, and Xreal. Let's hear it for those guys. I actually have no titanium in me, but I appreciate titanium sponsors, right? All right. Um, so remember, um, uh, throughout Niantic and Snap Lounges, you want to get to that expo hall. You want to um, check out all the other great sessions. And then without further ado, our first session today is developing mixed reality experiences with AI-enabled characters. And we're going to um, hand it over to the moderator, Ernestine Fo, who's going to introduce her panelists. And Ernestine is a general partner at Brave Capital, and they're focusing on investing in big data, security, and transportation technology startups, all the different things that are powering everything you're going to be hearing about today. So let's have a big hand for this great panel. Great. Thank you all for joining us today. Welcome to our panel on developing mixed reality experiences with AI enabled characters. So context for this panel is over the last few years, we've seen significant progress around displays, graphics, haptics, motion tracking, just really improving that mixed reality experience. And then also, especially in the last few months, we've seen great leaps and bounds made when it comes to AI algorithms being developed. So generative AI, um, hot topic these days, for instance, where just five years ago, we thought machine learning, all it could do was classify cat images. Um, but now it's really started to 
dominate global headlines, dozens of businesses be created. So this panel, very exciting um, to see that convergence between AI algorithms and mixed reality experiences. Um, especially excited for our panel here today because we have individuals from Niantic, Enrolled AI, as well as Liquid City, and they just released an experience two days ago that is the convergence of AI-enabled characters as well as mixed reality. So. Um, maybe we can queue up um, a video with that experience and showcase that. Oh, hello there. I don't believe we've met before. My name is Wall, and I'm a northern saw, what owl who grew up here in the Redwood Forest. Is there anything you'd like to know about the Redwood Forest? What's the tallest tree in the forest? The tallest tree in the forest is a whopping 371 feet tall. That's almost six times taller than a T-Rex. What's your favorite thing to eat in the forest? Well, as an owl, I have a pretty varied diet. But I must say, my favorite thing to eat in the forest is mice. They're just so tender and juicy. Do you have any friends with all of these animals? No, oh, I have lots of friends in the forest. Some of them are birds like me, and some are squirrels and chipmunks. But my best friend is a wandering salamander who lives high up in the canopy. Are there any myths about the forest? No, oh, there are plenty of myths and legends about the Redwood Forest. Some say that if you listen closely, you can hear the trees whispering secrets to each other. Can trees talk? Some scientists believe the trees speak a language humans can learn to hear. But as an owl, I prefer to listen to the rustling of leaves and the chirping of birds. It's like music to my ears. What do you think of humans? Oh, humans? Well, I have mixed feelings about you all. On one hand, you're fascinating creatures who have built some amazing things and created art and music that I love to listen to. But on the other hand, you also do some pretty destructive things to our beloved forest home. So I guess what I'm saying is, it's complicated. Well, I think that's enough chatting for one night. I'm feeling a little tired after all that talking. Thank you so much for spending time with me and asking such great questions about the forest. I hope you learned something new today. Wow. So these are the panelists who made it happen. So why don't we kick off with introductions. Um, KG, why don't you introduce yourself and um, what does your company Liquid City do? Yeah, so I'm Keiichi Matsuda. I'm the director of uh, Liquid City. We're a small design studio based out of London. Uh, and we do lots of uh, work to try and think about what's the future of our interaction with computers. Uh, we're building demos, we're building some games, and uh, kind of working closely with um, Niantic on thinking about strategy and ecosystem as well. Uh, so this is our latest project, and I think you know developing uh, kind of AI-powered agents um, that can do lots of different interesting things has been like real passion of mine for a long time. So it's very very exciting to have like finally released our first agent. Great, Kylan. Awesome. Uh, Kylan, Chief Product Officer at Inworld. Uh, we're a developer platform for building these AI-driven characters, and we really think this is the future of storytelling and narrative games and experiences, uh, introducing that way that consumers and audiences can actually create the experiences themselves by interacting with characters and driving the experience through that interaction versus scripted um, scenarios. And so we think this is really going to change the way that we interact with media overall. Um, our team came from backgrounds in AI at, at Google and DeepMind, and uh, we're really excited to partner with folks like Liquid City and Niantic, and really, really was wonderful to see you all come to life this week. So yeah, thank you all for checking it out. I guess that leaves me. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Miriam Sabor. So I'm with Niantic and 8th Wall. I've been with Niantic for about five years now. Um, I lead business development for our platform uh, and headset initiatives. That includes both our Niantic Lightship platform on the Unity side and the 8th Wall platform, which is the WebXR platform that we built Wool on. I'm super excited to be here with uh, Liquid City and Inworld um, and talk about mixed reality. Um, there's a lot that we're doing on the 8th Wall side that we're going to talk to about metaversal deployment, so excited to get into that. Great, thank you all for being here today. So Miriam, let's start with you and talk a little bit more about this wall experience that we just saw. What was the origin story for wall? Um, like what was Niantic trying to accomplish with creating this? 
Yeah, it's a great question. And actually, I think there's a few different touch points for kind of what uh, sparked uh, Wall to come alive. Um, for one, uh, the first objective was really for us to showcase the mixed reality experience that leverages metaversal deployment, which I just mentioned, uh, which is essentially our ability to build once and deploy cross device. So uh, being able to, as you saw actually in the video, um, have this experience uh, interacted with both from a mobile, uh, mobile device and headset. Um, and specifically, we've had metaversal deployment or our eighth wall has had it since 2021, um, but we just optimized it for pass-through devices, which was really why we wanted to think about how we can showcase an innovative mixed reality experience. Um, at the same time, uh, we were actually doing an AI hackathon internally at the company, and we had invited InWorld. Uh, and uh, some of you know the seedlings of these ideas came through some of the, the concepts that we were developing there. Um, and the team had developed um, this uh, pirate character at the ferry building, who you know was kind of another type of virtual guide, who would give you all these historical facts and pirate type facts uh, about the ferry building, which is where our office is. For those who don't know, um, and so uh, kind of this idea of trying to create a very immersive of experience um, where we can lean into a, a character-enabled AI and essentially became a very personalized educational experience is what came to life. Um, and I'm sure uh, the team here will talk more about that process. Yeah, along that lines, um, Keiichi, we all saw that wall is more than just about sharing facts. It has a whole personality to it. Um, can you describe that personality and also how does that personality and communication style enhance this learning journey and process we have around Redwoods? Yeah, I think it's you know very interesting to think about this convergence of AI and XR together. Uh, obviously, you're able to have an amazing personalized learning experience through just interactions text is text on ChatGPT or whatever. So we have to think about what are you going to get when you're able to actually not only have uh, you know the character in front of you, but also be able to transform your environment as well. Um, so thinking about Wall as a character with its own perspective that you know is not going to be there to kind of teach you from the top down, but is actually more of a kind of learning partner that you can discuss ideas with and it, it can have its own perspective. That was very important to us. Um, so creating Wall the character is a little bit like directing an actor or something like that, right? You give it motivation, you give it things it wants to talk about, and you, you know, think about the style in which you want it to talk. Um, so we worked with a writer who developed Wall's personality, and rather than try to make it something that, you know, claim to know everything and be able to just uh, give you the fact, uh, we thought it's much more interesting to have uh, a sort of storyteller who has kind of a fallibility, right? So even with the animation and the way that the world moves and talks, there's something a little, you know, kind of uh, funny about about Wall, and we find that that's much better at making so that it never feels like annoying, uh, annoying to to it. It's it, it has more of a charm to it instead. Mm -hmm. And more broadly speaking, Keiichi, as a creative, what was it like collaborating with AI to make this experience? Yeah, I mean, uh, the director of the project, uh, Liquid Cities, uh, Jasper Stevens, did a lot of work on developing these new processes, working a lot with InWorld to think about the different best practices for doing it. Um, yeah, like, it, it's not a, a situation where we're, like, putting in text that it's then going to read out. Uh, it's much more about giving it suggestions of things to talk about, building out its knowledge, and then everything that Wall says is new every time. Um, so, you know, for us, it's kind of nerve-wracking to put it in front of other people because we've been talking to Wall for a long time and sort of raising it, guiding it, and, you know, testing in different ways. And then we start to see other people having conversations with it. It's like sending your child out for, you know, talking to someone and hoping they don't say something stupid. But... Uh, uh, the whole the whole way through, I think one of the great things about InWorld is that it kind of keeps the conversation, you know, coming back to, to uh, Wald's core motivation of teaching you about the Redwood Forest um, in a way that you can understand. And Kylan, can you talk more about the technology that's powering this wall experience? Because it's not, as Keiichi mentioned, it's not scripted. It's not a scripted conversation. It's all powering using generative AI. Like, can you talk more about how that experience is being powered. Yeah, so we start, obviously, you know, most folks here have probably tried ChatGPT or these other tools, and they're very powerful. Um, and so we start with a platform that makes that possible for real-time experiences where you can actually interact with it. Of course, when you interact with Wall, it's very important that you're actually able to have that back and forth with the latency and you know, the real-time, like, um, effects that you would expect from a human, but adding on top of that the personality, right? Like as Keiichi was mentioning, there's this, there's this deep personality in Wall that actually is consistent and brings you back in the same way that you know you have your friends and family that you go to and you have this sort of consistent personality that you know and love and brings you back and you kind of learn about each other and that adapts the conversation and becomes more personalized over time. Plus there's this context awareness. So actually Wall does have an awareness of who he's speaking to, of what the context is in the Redwood Forest, of what his motivations are accomplishing that. And all of that is actually built using the engine. And 
so when you're having that interaction, the AI is actually taking all of that in as well as what the user's saying and then generating that response. And so it's able to take in that audio, that speech and everything and bias it based on the personality that you have provided it. And we really think about this, you know, if it's like taking a human actor and, you know, being very you know, cautious as a director of, okay, this is how you're going to behave in this moment. You know, if the user says this. And so that's really how we think about what we're providing at InWorld, but it's ultimately about unlocking that creative spirit and allowing for this to be expressed in new ways and um, enabling new experiences like this. And so it was really exciting to see come together. Of course, we're, we're, we're hacking away on the technology, but then to see it come together in this personality with creatives is, is phenomenal. And Kylan, can you also talk a little bit? The way I think about Enrolled is kind of like ChatGBT on steroids. I don't know if you guys use that analogy, but that's kind of how I think about it, where it's not just the conversational element of the black and white text conversation, but also having those emotions and um, gestures that mimic um, the conversation as well. Can you talk a little bit more about that and how it was like creating that with Wall specifically? Yeah, so we have this paradigm of like perception, cognition, and behavior. So perception is really how the character is taking in all of that input. And of course, ChatGPT is really kind of like a single personality, right? When you interact with it, it gives you very, very good information, but it has like that consistent personality. And so what Inworld's providing on top of that is a way to basically provide controls over the speech, the dialogue style, the motivations, the little flaws and challenges that the character has, their backstory, the facts and knowledge that they have. Um, and all of that is then being taken in. And so you can think about, you know, starting with something like a chat GPT style model and then layering on what you're providing as a creator to bias that character in that specific moment. And then you're adding on sort of, you know, the, what we call a, the contextual mesh, which is basically, you know, what are the scenes? What is the information? What is the world inform like world knowledge? And what is the player supposed to be taking on in that moment? And so, you know, we really realize that, you know, these chat GPT or you know, generic LLMs are, are powerful when you're just doing sort of generic productivity tasks. But for creative experiences, that personality driven moments, those that contextual awareness is, is really what drives that. Um, and we see this as, you know, a really important point because while we, of course, you know, have computers that we interact with, it's, it's the people in our lives that really drive a lot of our, like the core parts of our experience. And we see this as sort of, you know, how media will evolve into the future. We've been very used to static media, but thinking about how a character can be powered in real time um, and, and really kind of, you know, we're, we're providing all the backbones and technology that, that allow that to happen. Um, but it's only possible when we then put it in the hands of great creators like uh, Kate Sheehan, Liquid City team um, to bring it to life. And um, for any of the panelists, like how do you see mixed reality and AI transforming educational experiences in the future? And maybe could you talk a little bit about some of the benefits and challenges associated with that? Miriam, why don't we start with you? Yeah, sure. So you're asking um, how do we see mixed reality transforming specifically uh, educational experiences mm -hmm. and pros Education. and cons with that? Um, so I have a question for, for everyone first. I'm just curious, does anyone remember the experience Henry? Um, I think it was Oculus Studio Stories, Oculus Stories Studio, anyone remember that one? Um, do you all remember that moment when you when Henry is making, and so for those who don't know, this is an experience that came out of uh, Oculus Studios a while back, and I mention it because for me, when I first had that Henry experience, and I think for a lot of people in the industry, it was the first time a character kind of broke the fourth wall with you, where uh, there was eye tracking in the device, so for the first time, you could kind of watch Henry make eye contact with you as the story is unfolding. Um, for me, I think that was the same thing I experienced here with Wool, which was a different fourth wall that was kind of broken uh, when Wool just says your name at the very beginning of the experience. Um, and so thinking about you know, personalized education, I think that being able to really bring these uh, characters to life, going back to this contextual awareness, to this immersion, um, I think is gonna be extremely transformative, uh, not just for education, for travel, for tourism, and for much more beyond that. Um, and you can even think about enterprise use cases as you think about learning and training and um, you know, for soft training skills. Um, so there's a, so, such a wide uh, um, kind of um, way that, that we know that this can be uh, deployed across many verticals. Um, so I think definitely on the pro side, maybe we can all talk about the pros and we can all talk about the cons because there's definitely things to say about AI on the on the con side that we want to be cautious about. Um, but for me, I think it's really that um, that immersion that I'm excited about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think, what do you think? Yeah. For me, um, you know, be, being able to think about education doesn't mean that it has to be you know a thing that goes in schools or a thing that you know people do because they want to specifically learn something. I think one of the things that this experience does really well is kind of making it a really entertaining experience as well. And you don't necessarily feel like, okay, I'm gonna go and learn about this thing, but it actually tries to provoke this curiosity in people so that they're driving the conversation, right? You're not being told 
a bunch of facts, you're actually able to you know, be curious and ask and direct the conversation in the direction you want to go. So whether it's, you know, if you're an expert in a subject matter or you're a complete novice, it doesn't matter. You can, uh, you can interact with Wall and Wall will always have, a, have an answer for you. So for me, I think it's great to have these opportunities for learning everywhere, you know, um, the ability to be able to continue learning throughout your life, I think is an amazing thing that we can do. And um, this technology allows you to be able to, to have that in a really, really accessible and uh, approachable way. Yeah, and I think there's something where we've got used to this form of content where you have a single creator or producer who produces the form of content, let's say it's a textbook or a curriculum or an online course, and then you have someone consuming that in exactly the form that it was created. And I think that of that is like traditional education where there's a you know, specific content that someone is meant to now consume and then you test them, did you learn all the things that were in this? And I think there's something changing here which is learning as a sort of interactive experience where instead of actually taking that content and having it produced, you are actually producing the learning experience as you're interacting with it. And I think this you know, goes, of course, beyond education, but I think it's very important for education because one of the problems we have today in, in schools and in education overall is people feel like they're not being seen or like, you know, if, if I have, you know, a specific interest, I can't go down that path specifically. I have to stick to the script that is given to me or the curriculum that is given to me. And so I think education moving from something that is a, you know, a, a, a a modality of people creating and then producing and, and consuming in, in a very specific way to something that is produced in an experience that someone can kind of go down whatever path that they want and, and respecting that and respecting what the learner's actual interests are, I think opens up education to something that respects who the learners um, and, the, and the, you know, the students are in any moment. And I think that will also hopefully change the way that people feel seen um, in educational and learning experiences. Yeah, no, this is exciting in terms of applications of mixed reality combined with AR. AI on education, what are some of the challenges you see in making that future a reality? Um, I, can, I can start on the challenges. I, I did want to just add one thing to what you said, which was um, uh, we, there's, there's a lot of studies that have shown um, when you are doing anything in VR or AR, it tends to kind of stick longer. That's like the TLDR. But, you know, the Stanford Human Interaction Lab has done a lot of studies here. Um, a lot of theirs had to do around, um, like, uh, uh, climate change and the effects of climate change. So getting people to, like, you know, saw, uh, you, like, saw a tree down in VR and you actually feel what it feels like to do that. You hear the tree falling and going down and then how that actually changes your behaviors in real life. So going back to this immersion of these personalized uh, education experiences, you can imagine that um, you know having these types of experiences, because of the immersion that you're in, it'll actually help you to remember something more. It'll help to stick longer. Um, but now going to the challenges, um, you know, I think something that even we were very concerned about as we built this experience is how do we make sure that um, it, well, one, uh, wall stays on topic and, you know, doesn't um, if offend anybody, right? And how do we make sure that um, we're thinking about the biases that are in place? How do we uh, deal with, you know, the, the ethics around it? Um, we have a trust and safety team that, uh, as we call them, our red team, who really did, uh, you know, such an amazing job at QAing. And um, I think the safeguards that Enrolled has already placed uh, on, on your platform really helped to make sure that, you know, as we go through all of the possible things that could, you know, come up in a conversation, whether whether it was, and to be honest, these were all the things our team had to go through, you know, real topics, whether it's discriminatory, whether it's a, a sexist comment, whether it's uh, someone talking about topics like suicide. You want to know how is the AI going to respond to something like that, right? And what, what's going to be said? So we really had to make sure we tested for all these things and provided those safeguards. And, and the Enroll platform was great for helping. Um, and I think it's important that we're always um, doing things carefully and testing as we go. Yeah. We were also very concerned that this is an educational experience, so it has to tell the truth. And we know that in lots of the time, the chat GPT will just make up stuff, like, right? Like, I've, I've been like using it for lots of things, and sometimes you, it sounds so convincing, but it's just completely wrong, which is obviously the opposite of what you want in an educational experience. But uh, we found that actually, like, by defining the kind of common knowledge that uh, Wall has in the Inwell platform, it's able to always kind of stay on topic. And uh, one of the things, you know, sometimes when we're testing it ourselves, it, it says something like uh, talk about glowing mushrooms or a lizard that never comes out of a tree and just lives its whole life up there. And we're like, this is terrible, it's all broken. And then we look it up and it's true. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. So we find ourselves as well learning new things every day. Will just told me a few jokes I'd never heard before. Uh, they're not that good jokes, but they're unique every time. So it's kind of incredible that there's a, this balance between you know, the veracity of the information, but also its ability to improvise. Yeah, and there, there are definitely lots of challenges on the AI side. I mean, we're all aware of, I think, the, the upsides and downsides of an AI. And 
you know, being able to even take in the right knowledge at the right time, you know, wh which, which knowledge facts are relevant, like that's a problem we have to solve, making sure that the latency is good, making sure that the reliability is good. Of course, all of that is great. Of course, then, you know, making sure that we have a powerful enough generative model attached to this so that it doesn't really sound that dumb. You know, model, well, it does sound intelligent, and that comes from the fact of being able to connect very large models and, and enabling them at a low latency. Um, you know, making sure that this is running on network. <laughs> There's a lot of very strong technical challenges there. And then I think also from our platform, you know, it's, it's great to see this come to life but we, it's hard to work with creatives and understanding, you know, are we giving you the, the controls that you need? You know, we're really every week trying to work on the best features that we can produce that give you the controls that you need to actually produce these experiences. And, you know, only by working with that do we learn that. And so, you know, even through this project, there was points where, you know, we were understanding, oh, oh geez, you know, there's, there's, there's things that we haven't added in and we'll add in a new feature. Um, for example, you know, better knowledge controls or better controls around safety, um, better consistency of personality or dialogue style, better voices. Um, all of those, are, you know, there's, there's dozens of engineers working on that and they're, they're very challenging problems, but it's, it's really you know, gratifying to see it come together and actually work. <laughs> And Miriam, you alluded to this, we're gonna see these sorts of experiences beyond just education. And um, Kylan, I know Enrolled's pursuing different um, sectors and applications beyond just education as well. Uh, maybe Miriam, can you talk, you alluded a little bit on this, but can you talk a little bit more about some of these additional application areas, um, enterprises, other other areas beyond education? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For me, I actually come from the VR world prior to Niantic, so I think about a lot of the VR applications that um, were trying to do this but lacked a lot of the AI tools back then to be able to do them well. Um, but there are companies like Tailspin that comes to mind um, and many, many others where they have examples like, you know, trying, to, how do you deal with trying to teach someone how to, um, you know, let someone go or tell someone they're not performing well? And so they actually play you through a scenario where there's a character and this character is, you know, crying or, you know, acting frantic or doing crazy things and trying to teach you how to deal with that. And so if it was, uh, you know, actually using in-world capabilities where, you know, it's really generating these real life responses and you have an AI character, um, it would really allow you to test for all these different scenarios. And that's more of the soft skills training um, on the enterprise side, but um, there's probably a ton, ton more if you, you like to add to that. Yeah, if you don't, like, I guess, you know, the, the thing that has really drawn me to this space is thinking about how we're going to interact with computers in the future. Uh, at the moment, we're doing everything through our phones and our, our screens, and we're just poking little buttons on these devices and staring at our screens the whole time. One of the things that makes me so excited about the future of AR and mixed reality is the possibility for computing to be all around us. But in that world, we need a new way to be able to interact with that because we don't want to be typing on virtual keyboards in the air and we don't want to be jabbing our fingers into the sky or even having just like interface elements everywhere. It doesn't really feel you know, that nice. Um, I made some kind of dystopian films in the past about how bad that could look. Um, so I think for me, like this idea where it's not just wall, but there's actually like an agent for everything. You could imagine instead of your, you know, your maps app, you might have a, a, an agent that I just told where I wanted to go and it's going to take me there. I might have an agent for dating, which is going to show me, you know, people in, in the, in the space. Well, you know, I wouldn't tell my wife, but, uh, <laughs> um, and you know, uh, you, you can imagine like an agent for banking, that I don't have to click on all the different buttons and enter passcodes. I can just talk to my banking agent, maybe a little penguin that follows me around. And then if you think as well about location-based agents as well, right? A, an agent that hangs out in a store or a restaurant and can give you information about it. An agent that lives on your street and you can complain to about the potholes and then it's gonna report back to the local government. I kind of imagine this whole ecosystem of agents, which is almost kind of like a spirit world where we have all of these kind of creatures that are animate and have come to life. And our interaction with computers is just like our interaction with each other. The ability for them to then be able to talk to each other as well could be really exciting. So for me, trying to think about you know, new opportunities and what our interaction is going to look like and how we really harness the power of that, uh, of that technology and make it in a, such a way that is, is so intuitive to interact with, much more than using a phone or a computer, uh, that's what gets me really excited. And it's all going to be personalized experiences. So I know we're out of time for this panel. Um, lots of really exciting applications of mixed reality AI. And um, yeah, thank you all for coming today. So thank you again to our panelists as well. All right, let's have a big hand, everybody.